Well, I think that we should absolutely be aware of the real and potential problems of AI. And this isn't just people wearing tinfoil hats, worrying about every technological advance. Some of the smartest and most forward-thinking people on our planet are worried about this. Uh, famed physicist Stephen Hawking has said that the results could be cataclysmic if we don't have very strict and ethical rollouts of AI. So I think that because of these people who think about this stuff all the time, that they're worried about it, it's at least worth examining. So these concerns, they're here, they're now. What are some of the real current problems that may be lying out there? So one of the biggest right now is job loss. There has been recent forecasts that 36 million jobs or more could be at risk because of AI. And these aren't just blue collar jobs. These are white collar jobs. Any job that has simple, repetitive tasks to it can easily be outsourced. And we've all seen those cool videos where a robot learns to tie a shoe or throw a ball to a dog. Well, unfortunately, the more dexterous robots become, the more jobs that they can actually take away from living human beings. Now, the one caveat to this, I'd say, is ever since the Industrial Revolution and likely before that, every technological advance has actually cost jobs. But on the flip side, that those new technologies create new, usually safer and higher paying jobs. Whether that continues in the age of AI remains to be seen. Beyond job losses, a very real concern, what other worries are there out there on the horizon? Well, one thing we've got to keep in mind, Rob, is that AI is basically a product of the programmers that create it. And the vast majority of programmers in AI right now are white, male, they come from high socioeconomic backgrounds, they're, they're not handicapped. And so this is their worldview that everybody is like them. And there's a couple of well-known stories, one of a guy who uploaded all his photos to Google Photo and Google AI automatically puts them in folders based on uh, facial recognition, uh, image recognition. And he was surprised to see a folder called Gorillas. And when he opened it, it was photos of one of his black friends. And a similar case happened when an AI researcher who happens to be black, she wasn't being recognized by the facial recognition software until she put on a white mask and then it picked her up immediately. So there's problems with the data that we're feeding into these uh, artificial intelligence. And it's partially because we have our own worldview. And until we get more diversity in the programmers, we're gonna continue to see this problem. Those are problems that exist right now. How about as you peer into the future, what are some of the potential problems that we might be looking at? Yeah, so of course there's an infinite number of potential problems, but one that seems really important right now is the idea of AI being used in weapons. And you know, what if all of a sudden during a skirmish, the AI decides that the most optimal solution to a problem is dropping a nuclear bomb or releasing chemical weapons? If there's not a human being behind that saying, oh, no, 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 that could be a problem. And we may wanna say that, well, the US government would never do that, but how about all the other governments out there or all the other anti-government organizations out there or terror cells? So it's something we really need to keep an eye on and really think hard about on how to prevent such a thing from happening. So now that you've got us more than a little bit unsettled with some of these rather unpleasant scenarios, what, what can people do? What can we do right now? So sometimes this does feel, especially as I was doing my research, that this is above your pay grade. Um, and a lot of this happens in the private sector, which is often all about the profit and making sure that the shareholders are taken care of. But a lot of this falls under government regulations. And so the best thing that the average person can do outside of going into AI research and becoming a scientist themselves would be is to reach out to their, uh, to their elected official and let them know what a concern this is and what kind of steps they want the government to take to make sure that we don't end up with those cataclysmic results that Stephen Hawking's warned us about.